Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your holy word. We pray that your Holy Spirit would quicken your holy word to our lives, that as we hear your rhema word, that we would act on it and truly build up our faith and believe God to possess our possessions for your glory. Bless this time. Bless your people, those in person as well as on YouTube, that we would continue to be encouraged and strengthened, edified in your holy word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And God's people shout, Amen. 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 God is a good God. Well, last week we looked at the book of Joshua, and the character was Joshua. The key chapter was Joshua 24, and the theme was choose life. Amen. We do not choose death. We choose life. Say choose blessing. Choose blessing. We never choose curse. Amen. Neither with a default, we must not go into death nor curse. Amen. Hallelujah. So chapters 24 of Joshua, we see some of the most critical periods in Israel's history are the transitions of leadership from Moses to Joshua. And then we see Joshua to the judges, the judges to the kings and so on. And in this transition, it is very vital to abide in God. Amen. So we see that Joshua to judges was a very vital period. And Joshua once again brings the congregation to a commitment to the renewal of the covenant with God. And he says, choose for yourself whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, that beautiful placard, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. So let us all make our commitment to raise a family altar that our families would be strong in Christ and we would uh, receive the blessings of the new covenant. Amen. And enjoy the grace of God, which is unmerited favor as well as divine ability in our lives. So we see Joshua, he reviews for the people God's fulfillment of his promises and then challenges them to review their commitment to the covenant, which is the foundation for all successful national life. If the individual is right with God, then the family could be right with God. And when the family is right with God, the church will get right with God. And when the church is right with God, the city can get right with God. And when the city is right with God, the nation will get right with God. And when the nation gets right with God, the world can get right with God. Amen. And we continue to pray for Israel to be right with God, that they would recognize the Messiah, Adonai, Yahushua, HaMashiach. Amen. So having given that recap of Joshua, well, today we are looking at the book of Judges. When we look at the book of Judges, we see the character of the angel of the Lord. And the key chapter is Judges chapter 2. Now in Judges chapter 2, let's look at it. Verse 1. In verses 1 to 5, we see the angel of the Lord making an announcement of judgment. And whenever you see the angel of the Lord, it is a Christophany in theology. That is a study of the appearance of Christ, the pre-incarnate appearance of Christ in the Old Testament. So we see the Lord Jesus appearing to God's people, Israel, in the form of the angel of the Lord. Is that very clear? Hallelujah. So it is really Yehoshua, Jesus, who is speaking here. Then the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bokim and said, 
I led you up from Egypt and brought you to the land of which I swore to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. Hallelujah. Amen. So Gilgal means a circle or a wheel. Sometimes we can go on in circles and we can go into a vicious circle and not come out of it. Sometimes we are in a cycle of poverty. We need to break out from that circle. We need to break out from that vicious cycle. Amen. And with that, we can enter into the cycle of victory, not a cycle of defeat, into the cycle of prosperity. But don't get me wrong. When I say prosperity, it means first, your soul must prosper. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's from Gilgal to Bokim. Bokim means weepers. We need to weep before God with a genuine repentance. Many weep out of fear, but we need to weep out of faith. Big difference. Because when we weep with fear, we are saying, God, you cannot handle it. I don't trust you to handle this situation of mine. But when we weep in faith, it is genuine repentance and realigning ourselves with the word of God, with the will of God, and with the ways of God. Hallelujah. Amen. That is very, very necessary to realign ourselves for the blessings of God into our lives. Like I always say, if there is plenty of water and the bucket is still empty, we have two problems here. The bucket is either leaking or the bucket is not in line with the flow of the water from the tap, right? So if we feel we are still empty, we are still weak, we are still living defeated lives, we need these two rectifications. One is plug in all the leaks with genuine repentance, ask God for forgiveness, deal with those finger holes and uh, toe holes and hand holes and foot holes and strongholds in our lives. Pull down those strongholds in our mind and see that Jesus is Lord. Put on the mind of Christ. Put off the old mind. Amen. So that whole mindset which leads you to defeat must be changed. Hallelujah. The whole mindset that gets you bogged down with a negativity all the time must change. You get rid of that. You forsake it and you put on the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Therefore, we see even Abraham had to come out of his country, out of his family, out of his house. And then he saw the stars in the sky and he believed God. And that belief, that faith was counted unto him as righteousness. Hallelujah. We are the righteous of the Lord. Amen. Tell your neighbor, looking them into the eye and say, you are the righteousness of God. But in Christ Jesus, <laughs> in Christ Jesus, we are the righteousness of God. Not because of our good works. Not because we've been good guys or good gals. No. Because of his righteousness. Hallelujah. So in Christ, we get covered. Amen. In Christ, we get sanctified. In Christ, we are right with God. Amen. Hallelujah. So the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal, okay, to Bochem. So when you realize you are in cycles and in a circle, you need to come to the point of weeping. Hallelujah. Weep in repentance before the Lord. I led you from Egypt. Amen. God has led us from the worldly system out into the kingdom of God. Amen. Brought you to the land which I swore to your fathers. Amen. 
all our faith fathers that have gone by, God has promised to them. Amen. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. I mean, God is making it explicitly very clear. I will never break my covenant with you. So the sovereign God is a standard that will never change. He's a faithful friend. He's a faithful father. And he is not going to let you down. He's a present help in time of trouble. Hallelujah. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. He is with you. He is in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. Hallelujah. So he is a faithful God. Verse 2. And you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall tear down their altars, but you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? God seems to be talking to his people so personally. Today in the new covenant, the Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts. The voice of God is the word of God. And the word of God is the voice of God. The Holy Spirit could speak audibly to you. We do not doubt that. But very often he will speak through his word and make it very clear. Hallelujah. The best commentary of the Holy Bible is the Bible itself. Because the Bible interprets the Bible. Amen. Thank God for it. And so we are not left high and dry. But we can study God's word, rightly dividing the word of truth. And be set free from the inside, outside. Hallelujah. So he says, do not make a covenant with the people of the land. Amen. Now, this is very clear. We have to renew or first make a covenant with God in our vertical relationship. We need to renew our covenant. We thank God we break bread every Sunday. Amen. There are people who break bread once a year, once a month, in six months. You need to break bread as often as you can because in breaking of the bread we renew our covenant with God it involves the body of Christ and the blood of Christ symbols that beyond these emblems we touch the very divine nature of God himself it's not transubstantiation but it is just believing God that these emblems are the real life of Jesus. Amen. That's wonderful. So we renew our covenant with God vertically. But now there is an instruction. Do not make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. Now there are two areas we can always fall into this trap. In this world, we get tempted to make a covenant with unbelieving spouses. We're going to have an alliance with an unbelieving husband or an unbelieving wife. And that's the danger. God is making it very clear. Don't have this unholy alliance in marriage and in business partnership. Marriage and business partnership must not have any unholy alliance. So in other words... Be faithful in your covenant with God and do not compromise in your horizontal covenants. Hallelujah. If you're doing business, I would beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, with all the over 40 years of what I've seen in Christendom and by experience, never even have a business partnership with a believer. Now, don't get me wrong. It begins well, honky-dory, but somewhere down the line. I mean, if husband and wife have differences, you can imagine if you're not married to a person, there will be bigger differences. So somewhere along the line, there is a hassle 
in that business. One partner wants to give 20% to the Lord. The other partner wants to give 50% to the Lord. And there is a clash. Or, oh, he's only sitting at home, not working. I'm only working. There comes a point of struggle. So to avoid that, make the Holy Spirit your senior partner. Hallelujah. He has to be your boss. Amen. Now in partnership also, of course you can be two good friends. Maybe you have the brains and the other guy has the finances. So you say, Pastor, so what? You know, I, I need this. Well, work out some MOU in such a way and make things very clear. Whatever money comes in and how it's going to be paid back. See, very easy to borrow money, but we don't think of how we are going to pay back. We are very happy. And some guys come and say, just 2% only, 2%. And it clicks into your head, oh, only 2% better than the bank, but 2% per month or 3% or 5% or 10%. Oh my Jesus, it's going to squeeze you to death. So watch what you sign what covenants you make with people. The people of the world are very, very, I wouldn't say intelligent, but very crafty. Okay, so we have to watch on these things. Okay, so be faithful in your covenant with Christ. And secondly, don't compromise by making a wrong covenant with people. We are in the world, but not of the world. We have come out of Babylon, the Babylonian system. We've come out of Egypt. We've come out of the worldly system. There are many young people say, Pastor, I'm in love. I'm in love and I'm going to, you know, she's coming through. She's coming through, you know, very soon, you know, she'll become a believer, Pastor. One more soul in your church. How nice. Yeah, one more soul. But I want to tell you, if you compromise and uh, make this unholy alliance, 99% of the chances are you will become more worldly rather than that spouse becoming godly. It's always the other way around. So don't, please don't fall into a trap. Amen. There's no shortage of girls. There's no shortage of boys. Although everyone seems universally, there's no girls in our church. No boys in our church. That's a universal problem. But I want to say, you look to the Lord and God will open your eyes. And you can do it in the right way. Hallelujah. You can have godly spouses. And don't regret later. Amen. Is that clear? Verse 3, therefore... I also said, I will not drive them out before you, but they shall be thorns in your side. Oh, thorns in your side. And their gods shall be a snare to you. Thorns and snares. Or oh, let's make an alliteration. Thorns and traps. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't want thorns. I don't want traps in my life. Can we say that? I don't want thorns. I don't want traps in my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Verse 4. So it was when the angel of the Lord spoke these words to all the children of Israel that the people lifted up their voices and wept. They, what did they do? They wept. Then they called the name of that place Bokem, which means weepers, and they sacrifice there to the Lord. In a way, thank God, right? But I'm telling you, these were crocodile tears. There was no genuine repentance in that weeping. You see the professional mourners, how they come when people are dead. No one feels like crying, but they are crying. They don't even know the people. And people who have not forgiven them when they are living, they go, oh, and they give the whole history. You are so good, you are so good, and all the bouquets will come forth. But when they were living, they never even said sorry or forgive me. 
So this hypocrisy must get out of our lives. Hallelujah. Come on now. Praise the Lord. Just be clear. The other day we went to J Jesu Raju's house and I was very impressed with him. In the sense, I don't want to embarrass him, but he's, he's from the Navy, a civilian, but in the Navy. I mean, we hardly got in. First of all, the whole family. Great to see you, Alexander. And uh, the whole family gathered together. They were so happy that the pastor, Pastor Roy, Pastor Manisha, Brother Daryl was there. Actually, Brother Daryl's friends. And it's so nice. He began talking. And I just felt this man loves God. This man is not pretending. This man is speaking from the heart. This man is speaking from the purity of his heart. I was amazed. I was touched. In a few minutes, he told us his life story. And he laid his heart bare about his commitment to Christ and the family's commitment to Christ and the family's commitment to the local church. He made it absolutely clear. I want my son Benner to be functioning fully. You know, you know what I mean? Is That's commitment. Sometimes you can spend time with people the whole day and say, chill out, chill out. And yet you've not known them because they are big dodgers. They will not come to the point. They have never spoken from their hearts. It's all frivolous and very superficial and very artificial. It's plastic relationship, cosmetic relationship. Come on. God, once upon a time, we may have been doing that. But once you come to Christ and into the house of the Lord, no cosmetic relationships. Be real. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Be a joyful people, not a, not a sad, depressed people. Because then you become a target of the devil. I count it all joy when I face fiery trials. Because the joy of the Lord will be your strength in difficult times. You will not go down. I refused to get down when Bella passed away. I said, devil, you're a liar. In Jesus' name, I will arise in my spirit. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And hey, my soul, forget not all his benefits of salvation, of deliverance, of healing, of blessing, all provisions and protection, all that comes from you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I refuse to be depressed. I connect with the anointing of joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you connect with the anointing of joy, you will always be strong in the Lord. It's like building your immunity. No matter what virus comes your way, you are an overcomer. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. That inner strength must be like a steel wire. It bends, but it doesn't break. Hallelujah. So, beloved, don't be cosmetic in your relationships. Don't compromise in your relationships. Be real. Come on. Hallelujah. So I really appreciated that kind of heart sharing. And then we ended with saying, let's have a cell church here. And they were praying about it. They were praying about it. They wanted to have a cell church. Said we're going to have it there. Hallelujah. The blessings will flow. Raise the altar. Hallelujah. Two things in the Bible. You see milestones. They bring in rocks and making a heap of rocks. Hallelujah. Great as a milestone. Ebenezer, thus far, you have blessed us up to this point. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
And then you raise a fresh altar in a fresh dedication for the future laps in the, you know, the laps, not laps, for the marathon faith race. Hallelujah. So God's presence would go before you. Hallelujah. Weeping must be genuine, not like Pharaoh's repentance. It was not real. The godly generation dies now. And when Joshua had dismissed the people in verse 6, the children of Israel went each to his own inheritance to possess the land. They received their blessing. They received their promise. Hallelujah. So the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua. And all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua. So Joshua was leader for 14 years. Under his headship or his leadership, Israel lived very much in line with God for 14 years. And then when he died, he was no more. The elders took over and the elders kept the congregation in order for the next three years. But after that, the nation turned again ungodly. So in the book of Judges, you see a vicious cycle. Seven cycles of uh, Israel sinning against the Lord, going into idolatry. And that's the specific sin. It's spiritual adultery. So they slipped into idolatry. And with that sin, God was grieved and God allowed a strange nation, amen, an alien nation or the inhabitants of the land to overcome Israel. And they got into bondage. And when they were in bitter bondage in a way or under fear and they were, they were suppressed, then they started crying out to God. And when they cried out to God again, God is so compassionate. How many of you know God is a compassionate one? Even in the Old Testament. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. Hallelujah. He's a gracious God. And he, he saw their tears. He heard their cry. And he says, I must touch my people. I must help my people. And then he raised a judge in their midst. And the judge would really fight the enemy. And the enemy would be defeated and salvation would come to the nation. Hallelujah. And when salvation would come to the nation, they would prosper. They would be happy. And when they were happy, they would get proud. And when they get proud, they get blinded and they fall in the ditch again. Then again, the bondage. Then again, they will cry. Then again, God will raise a judge. And then they are delivered. You know, this goes on and on. Seven times. And the end of the book, what does it say? Each one did what was right in their own eyes. In other words, each one became a mini god. There is always confusion when you rule yourself. I think today as I put in the Jerusalem, you know, what is rebellion? Depending on self, but dependence on God is different. Hallelujah. Are you depending on God or you're depending on your self-resource? No, God. So submit to God. Submission is dependence on God. Rebellion is dependence on self. I don't want to depend on myself because myself cannot help me. Hallelujah. Cannot. Impossible. You go in your own steam and you'll fall flat on your face down the road. So don't do that. Amen. Hallelujah. So the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders. Without who outlived Joshua, those elders, who had seen all the great works of the Lord, which he had done for Israel. Amen. Verse 8. Now Joshua... The son of Nun, or the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died when he was 110 years old. Just like Joseph, he lived for 110 years. And they buried him within the border of his inheritance at Timnath Heres in the mountains of Ephraim. Hallelujah. 
Ephraim means doubly fruitful. Hallelujah. Joshua was one of the greatest leaders of Israel. Joshua means Jesus. In Jesus, we become doubly fruitful. Hallelujah. Amen. On the north side of Mount Gash. Gash means something which is shaking. When God shakes, all that can stand will stand. And what cannot stand will fall. Hallelujah. That's God's test. Timnot, Harris, or Timna, Sarah. Either one, it means the same. It means extra portion. So in Jesus, we will always have that extra portion. Hallelujah. Joshua was buried there. Hallelujah. In Jesus' death and burial, all the old is gone. He's resurrected in the newness of life. You have risen with Christ, not only crucified with Christ, buried with Christ, risen with Christ, ascended with Christ, exalted with Christ, seated with Christ, and you're coming back with Christ. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful partnership? Amen. This generation never knew the works of God. Verse 10, when all that generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord nor the work which he had done for Israel. Parents have worked hard, they've struggled. Many children are born with the spoon in the mouth. I want a bigger house. They forgot that they Parents were in chores. The parents were in slums. They had very difficult days. They've come up the hard way. And you want all the luxuries of life. And you twist your nose. You turn your head with such pride. How can that be? This generation which came up did not know God. They were a godless generation. They never saw the works of God can you imagine? It was like an atheistic generation in Israel. The godly generation dies and a new generation arises. And then the judgment of God is described. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, instead of forsaking the false gods, instead of forsaking idolatry and being faithful to God, they've been faithful to their idols and they forsook God. Just the opposite. My Jesus, my Jesus, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt and they followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were all around them. You saw, they got worldly. They never made the other people godly. They became worldly. And they bowed down to them and they provoked the Lord to anger. They forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtoreths. Baal and Ashtoret are a coupled idol and that is why when you have a male and female there is immorality the result is immorality so idolatry will always lead to immorality it is spiritual adultery they forsook the lord and they went into alliance with false gods and the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, so he delivered them into the hands of plunderers and who despoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of the enemies all around so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. Okay. Wherever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for calamity. As the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn to them, and they were greatly distressed. I want to say, um, everyone talks about, doctors talk about you. We all talk about it. We give people gyan, you know. We give them knowledge. Hey, don't get stressed. Take it cool. Take it cool. Don't be stressed, right? But everyone needs stress. Otherwise, you are not activated. Hello. Don't be distressed. You can be stressed. The best will come out of you. But don't be distressed. Distress will lead to depression. 
and it will bring weakness and it will bring you defeat but stress the right amount of stress will lift you up hello so don't say take it cool take it don't don't take stress don't take. you have to take stress man otherwise you'll be an irresponsible person you get it the stress must not turn into distress this is what the lord showed me last night as i was preparing hey man really that's the truth the truth about god's word tell your neighbor come on don't be distressed now change your vocabulary okay don't say don't be stressed don't be distressed don't be distressed that will bring depression that will bring weakness and you will be defeated but stress will get the best out of you hallelujah hallelujah in his help uh, in his help you can be stressed in christ the right amount of stress that is pressing on to the mark of high calling amen hallelujah thank you jesus let's move to 20 then the anger of the lord was hot against israel and he said because this nation has transgressed my covenant which i commanded their fathers and has not heeded my voice i also will no longer drive out before them any of the nations which joshua left when he died so that through them i may test israel you wonder why the devil is still hanging around why Oh but God is God he would have destroyed the devil and we wouldn't have had problem no 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 man no no we've got a sinful nature inside okay even without the devil we'll go against God in the perfect millennial rule and reign of Christ the 7000th year the 7000th year what it's going to be a perfect environment the devil will be in jail he'll be in the bottomless pit bound by one angel don't think the devil is too strong one angel bound him with chains hallelujah put him into the bottomless pit and i tell you the whole world went to worship god in mount zion in jerusalem and anyone who doesn't go to worship god will not have rain yes there is no blessing when there is no worship and what is worship not only singing song that is only part of it worship is all that we do on sunday is worship and then whatever you do throughout the week is worship worship leads to work work is not worship but worship leads to work Hallelujah otherwise it will be dead works Hallelujah it's very important to know that we need to be attuned with God I also will no longer drive out so the devil is hanging around and then at the end of you know what the parable says so don't worry don't worry don't remove those weeds from the tares and the weeds and all that from the from the wheat let it be let it grow baad mein dekhega the real fruit <laughs> kya what is weeds and what is wheat got it now god is not mocked whatsoever a man is going to sow that he is going to reap now at the end of the millennial rule and reign the lord releases this guy on bail who the dragon satan he is released on bail and the slimy character the serpent he will stir up the nations then you come to know which are the goat nations and which are the sheep nations and then they are finally defeated rebellion in the camp rebellion in the world in spite of a perfect environment the devil was used to expose his own deeds to expose those who were not true believers in Christ in the millennium so now you know why the devil is still around hanging around to test you what material you are made up of unless you are tested all these fellows tatas birlas all these industries every product is tested 
Only when it is tested will it be sent into the market. Hallelujah. Any factory for that matter. Right now it is apprenticeship before the coming of the Lord. Before rapture takes place. It's apprenticeship. Are you faithful in your apprenticeship? My brother joined Voltas. My Jesus. Soon after school in those days. He became, a, became an apprentice. He used to leave 5.30 in the morning and come back at 10. When we were sleeping, he used to leave for work. When we are sleeping, he's going to return. And he retired in Voltas. He was in, in charge of the R&D, research and development. The Tata group, captain of the Tug of War team and whatever, gold medalist from JRD Tata. All those things. But he was committed to this one company. My other brother committed to one company, Bank of Baroda. They, they played hockey, football for the bank. So commitment in this apprenticeship, I tell you, be faithful. The testings are going on. This life is not a honky-dory life. In Christ, it's difficult. But outside Christ, it is hopeless. So, pull up our socks and remember, it is testing time. It is testing time to get your material strong, ready to live for eternity with brand new bodies, resurrected bodies. I'm going to stop here now. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your love and goodness in our lives. Thank you for your precious people. Lord, whatever struggles we have in our hearts, we give them to you. Lord, intervene, please. We know that we have been crucified with you. We've been buried with you. Our old natures buried, dead. And now we arise with newness in our lives. Help us, O oh God. To walk in victory, led by the Spirit, walking in the Spirit and living in the Spirit and not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Lord Jesus, people of God, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I renew my covenant of faithfulness with you. You will never leave me nor forsake me. By your grace, I never want to leave you. I will always be with you, faithful, abiding in you and your word abiding in me. And in this world, I will walk circumspectly. I will not make unholy alliances. I will not compromise with the world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. A big hand to the Lord.